I call the Honourable Member... Uh, Alfred Nauru. Sorry. I move that the question be now put. No, I won't accept it. I call the Honourable Member Leanne Dalzell. Take over from uh, where my colleague Chris Farfoy left off, which is to talk around the declaratory orders um, sections, sections 57 um, and uh, through to 61. And I want to ask the Minister a few questions about this, and it's not my area of expertise, so I may not um, necessarily have um, a good grasp of this, but I would really appreciate the Minister uh, responding to this. And the concern that I've got is that um, this whole area about requiring um, or enabling a court to give a, an, a declaratory order, and it's not an expression that I'm familiar with, and I don't know whether they appear in other legislation. Perhaps my more learned colleagues will know the answer to that question. Um, the, it's, it's new ground. So, um, and the problem that I have with a declaratory order is that a judge, it's not like a declaratory judgment. In a declaratory judgment, you've got two parties who have a, a, a set of agreed facts upon which they ask the judge to adjudicate. And it's the same as taking a case, essentially, because you've got a, you've got a set of facts that are put before you. On both sides argue their particular point. In fact, we had a declaratory judgment last year uh, where EQC basically lost to the insurance companies and it's costing the country an absolute fortune. Um, but that was a declaratory judgment that was taken. That was the outcome and that's what we have to live with. Declaratory order, though, this is when um, the police are able to go um, to the uh, court and basically ask whether something is is lawful or not? Is that, am I reading this in the correct way? Perhaps colleagues can again assist me. And, and, and then the problem with doing that is that the court then makes a declaratory order, which is an advisory um, order, telling them that, that yes, it's within the law, but then a, a case is taken um, further down the track when the particular, um, the particular uh, um, provision is utilised in fact and a defendant in a trial then challenges um, the very basis of the, um, of the um, utilisation of the device technique or, or procedure or the carrying out of an activity specified in the order. And that to me sets up a really difficult situation because in fact the court has been asked to predetermine a position against which um, the the counsel for the defence in that particular case won't have the opportunity to argue their cause. So I'm really worried about the nature of these provisions and whether they are in fact appropriate provisions and I think this is why uh, we've asked for this particular, um, these particular clauses to be removed from this part of the bill. And you've tabled an SOP to do that. So my colleague Charles Chevelle has tabled an SOP to do that. And I think that that's a very reasonable step to take because when we think about the circumstances that arose in the um, Hakmid case, and I suspect that this is the reason um, that the, um, the bill dealt with this in this particular way, uh, without having taken into account the case, because of course this was preceding um, the case in, in question. Um, but it, I, I guess that the, the, the law is probably more settled now than it was um, when this was being drafted. And I've, I think that um, it really does need to be reviewed, because in the, in the current legal framework, there will have to be sought um, a court um, order before uh, particular surveillance can be undertaken. And so, therefore, yes. the, the, the reason for seeking a declaratory order really doesn't make much sense in light of um, where technology um, has already come. So it may have been something that we would have looked at um, um, several years ago, but it actually doesn't make any sense to me why we would have um, such a declaratory order uh, provision. Now, when I read the um, report back from the Select Committee, they made the point that, um, and I think that was on page 14 um, of the bill, 
they made the point that they were going to call it a, um, a residual warrant regime, and they changed that to the declaratory order regime. But I think in so doing, they've identified the specific problem with it. And the problem is, is that a declaratory order regime is actually not appropriate. It isn't appropriate for a judge to be making a decision on a um, particular regime such as this without, in fact, um, ensuring that uh, we're, well, it's inappropriate to provide judicial clarification, as it has said, um, in, in such a manner where, where it's not able to be. I call the Honourable Member Tim McIndoe. <laughs> I move that the question be now put. The question is that the question be now put. As many of that opinion will please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Uh, point of order, the Honourable Member Charles Chevelle. Um, look, I may have misunderstood uh, a brief conversation with the Minister and the Chair prior to the debate beginning, but she did indicate to me that she had had the officials have a look at this question over the uh, dinner break and that she, uh, as I understood it, was prepared to uh, explain to the committee whether or not the concerns raised by Labor members were correct. Um, if there were that opportunity, I know that uh, members on the side of the House would be interested in hearing from her. Thank you. I'll just restate it. The question is that the question be now put. As many of that opinion will please say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Aye. Party vote is called for. Aye. Please conduct a party vote. Thank you. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes opposed. Green Party. 14 opposed. New Zealand First. Eight opposed. Māori Party. Vote. Mana. Opposed. Act New Zealand. One vote in favour. United Future. One vote in favour. Honourable members, the ayes are 64, the noes are 57. The motion is agreed to. Yeah. Where's the next bit, please? Question. The question is that uh, clauses 59, uh, this is to do with clauses 59 and 61, and the question is the Minister's typescript amendments to the amendments set out on SOP number 12 be agreed to. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Contrary, no. no, 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 no. The ayes have it. Party vote is called. The clerk will please conduct a party vote. Thank you. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes opposed. Green Party. 14 opposed. New Zealand First. 8 opposed. Māori Party? Three opposed. Mana? One opposed. Act New Zealand? One in favour. United Future? One in favour. Honourable Members, the ayes are 61, the noes are 60, the Minister's amendments are agreed to. The question now is that the Minister's amendments as amended set out on SOP number 12 be agreed to. All those in favour please say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. Party vote call. Clark, Clark, please conduct a party vote. Thank you. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 
34 votes opposed. Green Party. 14 opposed. New Zealand First. 8 opposed. Māori Party. 3 votes opposed. Mana. 1 vote opposed. Act New Zealand. 1 in favour. United Future. 1 in favour. Honourable members, the ayes are 61, the noes are 60, the amendments are agreed to. The question now is, it's to, sorry, it's to clause 42AA, and it's an amendment in the name of the Honourable Member Charles Chevelle. It's typescript amendments to part three. They're proposed to raise the threshold for the lawfulness of trespass surveillance to offences punishable by a term of imprisonment of 10 years. All those in favour, please say aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. No. Party vote is called for. Clerk, please conduct a party vote. Thank you. New Zealand National. 59 votes opposed. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes in favour. Green Party. 14 in favour. New Zealand First. 8 in favour. Māori Party. Three votes opposed. Mana. One in favour. Act New Zealand. One opposed. United Future. One opposed. Honourable members, the ayes are 57, the noes are 64, the amendments are not agreed to. The, we now have uh, some amendments in the name of the Honourable Member Charles Chevelle. They're typescript amendments to omit uh, these clauses, 57 to 58 plus 60. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. <laughs> Against? Party vote call for? Party vote is called for? The result is... The ayes have it. Why is it the noes have it, but a vote's been called for? Vote's been called for? Party vote called for. Please conduct the party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes opposed. New Zealand Labor. 34 votes in favour. Green Party. 14 votes in favour. New Zealand First. Eight votes in favour. Māori Party. Three votes opposed. Mana. In favour. Act New Zealand. One opposed. United Future. One opposed. Honourable members, the ayes are 57, the noes are 64, the motion is not agreed to. We now move to clause 691A. It's an amendment in the name of the Honourable David Parkers, and it's uh, a typescript amendment to part three to the provisions in respect of production orders to apply to the Serious Fraud Office. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Contrary, no. no. Noes have it. Party vote call. Clerk, please conduct the party vote. New Zealand National. 59 opposed. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes in favour. Green Party. 14 votes in favour. New Zealand First. 8 votes in favour. Māori Party. 3 votes opposed. Mana. 1 vote in favour. Act New Zealand. 1 opposed. United Future. 1 opposed.
Honourable Members, the ayes are 57, the noes are 64. The motion is not agreed to. The question now is that part three, as amended, stand part. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. The contrary, no. Aye. The ayes have it. Aye. Party vote call. Aye. Clerk, please conduct the party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes opposed. Green, Green Party. 14 opposed. New Zealand First. Eight votes opposed. Māori Party. Three votes opposed. Mana. One opposed. Act New Zealand. One in favour. United Future. One in favour. Honourable members, the ayes are 61, the noes are 60. Part 3, as amended, will stand part. The question now is that part 4 stand part. It is debate on clauses 87 AA to 173 and includes the schedules. I invite some member to seek the call. I call the Honourable.